Chip 39 finished production weeks ago, yet it's been sitting idle at Starbase. SpaceX ran Test Tank 17 through its 11th trial on December 16th, then moved Test Tank 39.1 off the stand December 17th. These specialized prototypes validated every V3 upgrade separately before risking the actual flight vehicle. Why test individual components in isolation instead of going straight to S39? This methodical approach just cleared Massey for S39's arrival and Raptor 3 installation. So what did Elon's test tank strategy prove that makes V3 worth the wait? Here's what those test tanks actually accomplished. For the past several weeks, SpaceX engineers weren't just running generic stress tests. They were validating structural modifications, fuel system upgrades, and heat shield improvements that define the entire V3 configuration. Test Tank 17 pushed through 11 separate trials, each one targeting a specific component that will eventually fly on S39. Test Tank 39.1 ran its own campaign, validating the upper stage design. This isn't standard aerospace protocol. Most companies test everything together and hope nothing fails catastrophically. What makes this approach revolutionary? SpaceX isolated every single upgrade. If a weld fails on a test tank, you've lost maybe two weeks and some steel. If that same weld fails on the actual flight vehicle during cryogenic testing, you've lost months of work and a ship that took hundreds of engineers to build. The Massey test cage became SpaceX's insurance policy. By December 17th at noon, when test tank 39.1 lifted off the stand, the validation phase concluded. Not because SpaceX ran out of things to test, but because every critical system passed. That's the difference between rushing hardware to the pad and engineering confidence. Now S39 moves to center stage and the timeline compresses dramatically. The Mi Bay doors are open, the heat shield is visible, and structural readiness is confirmed. A road closure will move S39 to Massey within days, not weeks. Once it arrives, the testing sequence accelerates. Structural pressure test first to confirm integrity under load, then cryogenic testing to verify tank performance with actual propellants. These aren't formalities. They're the last checkpoints before Raptor 3 engines ever touch this vehicle. How much confidence do those completed test tank campaigns give SpaceX right now? Here's where the schedule gets aggressive. After cryogenic testing clears, S-39 returns to Mibay 2 for the milestone everyone's been waiting for, Raptor 3 installation. This marks the first time production V-3 engines mate with an official Starship prototype. Originally planned for several weeks earlier, the B-18 incident pushed everything back. That delay actually worked in SpaceX's favor. It gave engineers extra time to perfect the test tank validation rather than discovering issues during S-39's campaign. When those six Raptor 3 engines finally bolt onto S-39, they'll be connecting to a vehicle that's been validated at every level. That's not luck, that's strategic patience. The static fire test comes next, and this one carries serious weight. S-39 will return to Massey with engines installed, and SpaceX will conduct the first public demonstration of Starship V-3, powered by Raptor 3. The SQD system has been ready since November. The ground infrastructure is in place, and the test stand is clear. This isn't a capability demonstration. It's a statement. When those engines light up, SpaceX proves that months of methodical testing delivered a flight-ready vehicle. A successful static fire effectively ends the validation campaign and opens the door for flight operations. What happens if this test reveals issues the test tanks missed? The answer is, not much, because that's exactly why you run test tanks first. Any anomaly that appears during S-39's static fire will be minor compared to what could have happened without the validation phase. 
SpaceX has already stress-tested the design through multiple configurations. The static fire is confirmation, not exploration. That confidence level explains why B-19 is accelerating simultaneously rather than waiting for S-39 to fully prove itself. B-19's progress tells its own story about SpaceX's operational tempo. The aft section moved into Mega Bay 1 on December 16th, followed immediately by Section F-24, the upper methane tank, that same evening. The lifting jig for the hot staging ring arrived December 17th at noon, which means the forward section is coming within days. SpaceX doesn't move support equipment without the hardware being ready to use it. When that forward section mates with F-24, the assembly pauses briefly while remaining methane tank sections stack, then the forward section installs last to complete B-19. Current pace suggests full stacking by month's end. Why push B-19 this hard while S-39 is still in testing? Because SpaceX learned from Flight 6 that having backup hardware ready transforms launch cadence. If S-39 encounters any issues during its campaign, B-19 can potentially swap in without losing months of schedule. More importantly, staggering the test campaigns maximizes Massey facility usage. S-39 completes cryogenic testing in late December. B-19 begins its own cryotests in early January 2026. No conflicts, no wasted capacity, continuous progress. Engine installation on B-19 targets the second week of January. Static fire potentially hits the third week. If everything maintains pace, both S-39 and B-19 could be flight-ready by late January or early February. That timeline matters because it directly challenges Blue Origin's momentum and China's expanding capabilities. Blue Origin just achieved significant milestones with New Glenn, and China's space program continues advancing its own heavy-lift systems. SpaceX can't afford extended quiet periods at Starbase. The test tank strategy bought validation without sacrificing velocity. Once testing resumes, it resumes at full intensity. Starship E3's debut isn't just about technical upgrades. It's about maintaining American launch dominance during a critical period. How does NASA's new leadership factor into this competitive landscape? Jared Isaacman's confirmation as NASA Administrator on December 17th changes the entire dynamic. The Senate voted 67 to 30, ending over a year of interim leadership and uncertainty. At 42, Isaacman brings commercial space experience and actual spaceflight credentials. He commanded Inspiration 4, the first all-civilian orbital mission, and Polaris Dawn, which featured the first civilian spacewalk. His 62-page Project Athena document outlined a vision for a leaner, more agile NASA that resonated across both parties during his Senate hearing. Senator Tim Sheehy and Acting Administrator Sean Duffy both praised his understanding of what NASA needs to compete globally. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp highlighted Isaac Mann's rare combination of commercial leadership and flight experience. Those aren't empty endorsements. They're recognition that NASA needs someone who understands operational tempo, budget constraints, and technical risk management. Some lawmakers raised concerns about Isaac Mann's ties to SpaceX and Elon Musk, but those objections didn't prevent confirmation. The space community largely sees his commercial mindset as an asset, not a liability. Isaac Mann takes charge during a pivotal moment. Tight budgets, ambitious moon and Mars goals, rising Chinese competition, and internal challenges with slow decision-making and aging infrastructure. His tenure will define whether NASA returns to the moon efficiently, prepares for Mars realistically, and positions itself competitively. That pressure is enormous, but Isaac Mann's track record suggests he understands exactly what he signed up for. How quickly can he implement the changes NASA needs? 
While NASA's future direction clarifies, an unexpected challenge emerged with the MAVEN Mars Orbiter. During a routine communications blackout on December 6, when MAVEN passed behind Mars, the spacecraft lost contact with NASA's deep space network. That loss was expected. What wasn't expected, the signal never returned. NASA confirmed teams were investigating on December 9th, then recovered tracking data fragments on December 15th. That data showed MAVEN rotating unexpectedly and frequency shifts suggesting possible orbital changes. Together, these signs raised concerns about spacecraft orientation and stability. Launched in 2013, MAVEN was designed to study Mars's atmosphere and understand how the planet lost its habitability over time. The primary mission lasted one year, but MAVEN exceeded all expectations and became a critical communications relay for Curiosity and Perseverance rovers. Despite the anomaly, Mars surface operations continue through backup orbiters. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Mars Odyssey, ESA's Mars Express, and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. Mission teams already rerouted data through these spacecraft for coming weeks. The incident serves as a reminder that even proven, well-understood spacecraft can encounter unexpected failures after years of reliable operation. How NASA stabilizes MAVEN, or whether they can, will be closely watched. This convergence of events isn't coincidental. SpaceX accelerates V3 testing, NASA gets aggressive new leadership, and Mars operations face unexpected complications. The space sector is entering a phase where operational tempo, technical confidence, and strategic decision-making matter more than ever. Test tanks validated V3's design, Isaac Mann brings commercial discipline to NASA, and MAVEN's issue demonstrates why backup systems and redundancy planning remain critical. Each development reinforces the same principle. Methodical preparation enables aggressive execution. So here's what Elon's test tank strategy really accomplished. SpaceX traded a few weeks of perceived delay for absolute validation confidence. While observers questioned why S-39 sat idle, engineers were systematically eliminating every failure mode before the flight vehicle ever entered the test cage. That's not caution. That's operational intelligence. Test Tank 17 ran 11 trials. Test Tank 39.1 validated the upper stage design. And now S-39 moves forward with zero uncertainty about its structural integrity. The result? Raptor 3 installation happens on a vehicle that's already proven. Static fire tests a configuration that's been validated, and flight operations begin with engineering confidence instead of fingers crossed. Jared Isaacman's confirmation adds another layer to this evolving landscape. NASA now has leadership that understands commercial space tempo and technical risk management. Maven's unexpected silence reminds us why redundancy and backup planning matter. These three stories connect. Methodical preparation, aggressive leadership, and operational resilience define the next phase of space exploration. Starship V3, testing resumes within days, B-19 stacks by month's end, and the quiet period at Starbase is officially over. This is exactly how you maintain launch dominance during a competitive era. If this breakdown gave you new perspective on SpaceX's strategy, hit that like button and drop begin now in the comments. Subscribe to New Space Review and turn on notifications. V3's debut is approaching fast, and you don't want to miss what happens when those Raptor 3 engines finally light up. Thanks for watching, and keep looking up.